Hi everyone, Ethan, Ethan Eclipse Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and what do I even say about this new J. Cole mixtape? Outside of the obvious, because I feel like this is a review that pretty much writes itself. Literally everything about this tape projects a very short shelf life, because there's no possible way this thing is going to age in the same way records like 2014 Forest Hills or KOD have. It's literally titled Might Delete Later. It's not exactly displaying confidence out of the gate. And neither is the inclusion of multiple features on this thing, as many fans may know. Even though this is a tape, it's not an album. J. Cole does usually like to handle things solo on these uh, projects so he can later boast about how, you know, he went platinum and he did all these numbers with no features. And finally, at least part of this project sees Cole uh, with his arm twisted behind his back. He's crying, Uncle, because the final song on this record and a few other bars on this tape as well seem like they are just pretty much in response to the diss that Kendrick Lamar launched against him and Drake on the recent Metro Boomin and Future Project, We Don't Trust You. Which I don't even need to explain how that response was lame or why it's lame at this point because J. Cole himself admitted that it was and apologized for it at the recent performance that he did at Dreamville Fest uh, the weekend that this response seven minute drill came out. So again, clearly from the apology, from the title, this is not J. Cole's proudest moment. And yeah, as I just said, when you dig deeper into uh, the actual songs on this thing, uh, there not up to usual Cole quality standards. He has made way better and more memorable music in the past. It seems like on at least a few of these cuts, his heart wasn't really in it. You have to wonder why. Are the songs extras? Were they rushed? Is it just cutting room floor stuff? I mean, in the first 30 seconds of the opening track on this thing, we're firing off Rick and Morty bars. And while the flow and the beat are passable, uh, there are quite a few braggy and threatening lines that uh, were cringe on impact, but now read especially weird post Kendrick Lamar apology. Me to use a cyanide pill to a little cough drop. Not to mention the Gucci Mane spoken word outro on this thing is really forced, not quite as deep as it thinks it is. The similar inclusion of Trade the Truth toward the end of this tape uh, goes for a similar thing, but pulls it off a lot better. Then the following Crocodile Tears is a more passable listen, but uh, uh, flow wise, energy-wise, instrumentally too. Uh, this is pretty much just an, if you're reading this, it's too late era Drake song. Why is Cole dropping a tape just to release Drake songs? The song Fever later on the tape is just a super poppy, melodic, sweet, danceable Drake song. Again, Cole tape. Cole Project, why are we getting Drake songs done by Cole? And I suppose speaking of derivative, we also have this Cameron crossover that uh, kind of calls back to the Dipset era between Cole's flows and also the soul chops in the instrumental. Uh, some of the basic elements are there, but there's, there's no real vocal chemistry or magic going on between Cole and Cam. Maybe the total inability to gather any kind of excitement around appearances like this is the reason Cole is not doing too many features on his albums, you have to wonder. And then on HYB, I feel like as far as Cole's pen game, we truly are regressing. I mean, his off-season record that he dropped not too long ago, I liked that album, and I actually think it was Cole's best so far. And the, the progression he was making on that record really showed a bright future for Cole, especially given that, you know, the usual handful of totally whack, intolerable lines uh, were down to either a few or were just like non-existent. We are going back to those places, back to uh, that stage of Cole's career on some of these songs, namely HYB, where you're getting this horrendous bar where he's reciting the ABCs except for the letter L, uh, because as a child, L? What's that? I haven't been known to take an L. I don't even know what an L is. Well, you took a damn L on this tape. What? What? I'm not sure if a J. Cole bar has aged like me milk harder. I mean, at least that Jada Will Love line from back in the day had some shelf life to it, where, where it made sense. A grace period before we had to reach our eventual disillusionment with it. Then there's the song Pie, 
where J. Cole allows uh, Battle Rapper Daylight and Top Dog Entertainment's Absol, he lets them uh, do these insane trades all over the beat that are killer, that are lyrical, that are impressive. Honestly, they make for the best moment on the tape. The best moment on this project is Absol and Daylight rapping at each other. It is not a Cole bar, it is not a Cole performance, it is not a Cole anything. Especially in the case of this track, because it's not too long after after this incredible performance from these two, uh, that Cole comes through with this absolutely gross and transphobic bar. They plead the fifth. I'm seeing hints of a trans fella in cancel culture's vicinity. He's no killer, trust me. Beneath his chosen identity, there's still a pussy, period. Which, again, Given the way things have panned out post the release of this response to Kendrick, uh, couldn't be more projection, because it was Cole on that very track pretending to be something that he wasn't. Somebody who wanted to beef. Somebody who had the capacity to release a response to a diss track and have it be just as fiery, have it be convincing. Part of me even wonders, like, would his tune about apologizing and everything, would it have changed? Would it be different if the tables were kind of turned and there wasn't this negative response to the diss? Because uh, th there was a lot of uh, polarizing back and forth around seven minute drill uh, with uh, a lot of people hating on it because it, it, it was not a great retort. Conversely, Stealth Mode, I think is actually one of the best tracks on the record, even if it is a, a little short and uh, in need of some extra structuring, because it is on this track lyrically that J. Cole is actually kind of being real about himself, his intentions, his feelings, that he's not really one to embrace the pressures of beef and grudges, which, yeah, that uh, very much is him. Then we have the closing track, which is just, again, the nightmare that it is. There are a few semi-hype cuts on the tape. 3001 is one, Sticks and Stones is the other, but uh, tracks like this that are actually pretty decent, hard-hitting, are more the exception than the rule on this tape, which generally, again, is very mid, very underwhelming, uh, not great in terms of songwriting, refrains, bars, delivery, performance, performance, the features are not all that great either, and in the case, uh, when they were on the song Pi, they washed Cole out completely. So yeah, I'm just not really sure what to say. This project is a disappointment um, through and through. It's one of the worst things Cole has ever put out, which maybe sounds harsh, but honestly, to be any nicer to it than that would be to acknowledge that, what, it's like somewhere in the ballpark of uh, his past and successful albums, even his early mixtapes? No, it absolutely is not. This thing is not on the level of a Friday Night Lights or whatever. So we have to paint this tape for what it is. It is sub- subpar, uh, which is why I'm feeling a light three on it. Transition, have you given this thing a listen? Maybe you shouldn't, you know? Maybe Cole should just delete it later, like he says he will. Uh, yep. Oh. <laughs> Time to delete. Forever.